Hey everybody, good Tuesday evening. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here back with Weather for Weather Geeks as we head into midweek and we have the topsy-turvy forecast before spring really puts the pedal to the floor by the end of this week and into the uh, weekend. We've got uh, some cooler weather certainly in the near term. And you know, I wanted to quickly review some numbers here in April because I think it's been kind of a sneaky warm month. The story so far in April locally has been the rain, but actually the warm temperatures Again, kind of a sneaky story. It's something we haven't talked about much, but we're in the top 10 for warmest Aprils on record through today's date. 4.8 degrees above the average is where we stand after an above average high of 66 today. You know, we've had our share of cool days and we'll have another couple of cool days on this uh, graphic coming up during midweek, but you know, it, it really uh, has not been a very cool month at all compared to the average. And of course the rain's continuing to be the big story, although we've put together four consecutive dry days. We've had a few sprinkles over the last several hours and we'll have some showers in the area before midnight tonight. So the, today's zero is going to change, but uh, as of the issuance of the climate report uh, earlier on this evening, uh, we registered zero for the date and that's four consecutive days with zeros. And that's pretty nice after all the wet weather we had earlier this month, we are gonna finish. Even if we don't see another drop of rain, in April, uh, we would finish in the top 10. We'll certainly finish in the top probably seven or eight uh, wettest Aprils on record. Other climate sites in the region uh, very close to having their wettest April on record, including Pittsburgh. All right, of course, uh, no severe weather concerns here locally in the next several days, but it's been a very active spring so far, and in, especially in terms of tornadoes in Ohio. Ohio leads the nation as far as tornadoes so far this season. I've been asked a handful of times on social media um, I think people are stumbling into different articles online and, and just naturally wondering with all the tornadoes this year, hey, has Tornado Alley shifted into Ohio? And I addressed this on social media last evening, but in case you missed it, there's actually a pretty comprehensive study done back in 2018 about the uh, changes in tornado frequency uh, from 1979 through 2017. So, uh, you know, a few decades worth of data here. And indeed, Tornado Alley has shifted east somewhat in the last few decades. Not quite to Ohio. Uh, there's been no, you know, long-term upward trend in Ohio in terms of tornadic activity, despite all the activity this year. But we've definitely seen an uptick in tornadic activity in the lower Ohio Valley, the Mississippi Valley, down towards what we call Dixie Alley, which is down here. You know, a lot of us think of traditional tornado alley is out here, and Dixie Alley is down here. And, you know, the reason for this big change, I, you know, I think there's a couple of different things going on. Climate change has warmed ocean waters, including the Gulf of Mexico, which is very important for uh, U.S. weather and tornadoes, especially in the springtime. And when you have warmer water down here, that's more moisture that's available for storms and severe weather in parts of the deep south. Out in the Plain States, uh, you know, there's been a lot of drought in the last couple of decades, leading to a decrease in available moisture. There's also been, you know, pretty heavy urbanization of previously unurbanized areas out here across the Plain States, and that reduces the amount of vegetation there is. Vegetation supplies a lot of moisture to the atmosphere. When you reduce the vegetation, you can decrease the moisture some. Those are just a couple of things I think are, are going on as far as the reasons why, you know, this a change in frequency has been observed in tornadic activity. All right, again, no severe weather concerns anywhere close to our area in the next several days, but we are gonna get wet this evening with some showers pushing in as we head towards sunset this evening. And we'll be left with a, a handful of showers maybe trying to linger overnight. This band will push through this evening and then this activity will pivot down probably about three, four, five o'clock in the morning. Most of us won't notice that, but that same you know, batch of activity up towards Wisconsin and Michigan might produce a sprinkle or a shower as some of us get up and around on Wednesday morning. Now, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, that's our cold shot that's coming our way. Already the uh, Weather Service offices regionally have hosted some freeze watches. These will become freeze warnings, I think, in a lot of places, maybe frost advisories where it's a little more marginal, but I think in most of our viewing area, we'll be put under a freeze warning for Wednesday night and Thursday morning with temperatures dropping down not only below 32, but maybe into the middle and upper 20s in some spots. And here's one you know, kind of depiction of temperatures. Again, we're kind of flatlining on Wednesday, 40s to around 50 all day, but check out the readings. This is basically model data, but it'll give you a sense as to what to expect. Daybreak on Thursday, you know, 29s and 30s, and I think some of the colder nooks, sheltered valleys are probably gonna see 26, 27. Thursday morning. Now that should be our coldest morning until sometime next fall. We've got one more frost risk in the forecast though for Friday morning. It won't be as cold as Thursday morning, but Friday morning 
we could see some patches of frost with temperatures bottoming out around 32, 33, 34. Boy, a gloomy Wednesday coming up. Shower sprinkle chance in the morning. Most of the day just kind of cloudy and ho-hum and temperatures struggling. The sky then clears. That's why it gets so cold Wednesday night, Thursday morning. But that same high will give us plenty of sunshine Thursday afternoon and into Friday as well. Here's our next weather maker approaching uh, Friday morning. I think we'll get through the daylight hours dry on Friday. Effectively, a beautiful afternoon Friday. Um, Friday night, though, into Saturday morning, I think there will be some showers around. And these showers will probably get out of the way by midday on Saturday, leaving us with mostly dry weather for the rest of the uh, weekend. I wanted to talk briefly about the longer range, and we're going to you know, talk more and more about this in future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. But here's just one suite of modeling for the month of May. This is the European, uh, what we call the weeklies. Uh, actually, they're issued every day now, this set of long-range modeling from the European Center. And we're looking at temperature anomalies for the month of May here. Um, warm anomalies favored in the middle of the country, maybe on the cooler side out west, although some of this blue is probably what we call feedback um, from some of the snow that's still on the ground in the mountains. You'll notice in eastern Ohio, western PA, and a lot of the mid-Atlantic region, some neutral colors to even blue here. That may be a little bit surprising considering how warm May is going to start. And May is certainly going to start out on a warm note, but there's been some, you know, some trends here as we go towards mid-month and maybe the entire second half of the month. Uh, where it may not be quite as warm compared to the average. And so on balance, May could end up being close to average despite a pretty warm start. First week to 10 days are looking pretty toasty. I'm not going to show you the precip data off that same suite of modeling, but I, I will tell you it has a pretty dry signal in May. So at the very least, I do think that May will be less active um, with less rain events, fewer rain events than we saw in March and especially during the first half of April. So again, more long range thoughts, future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching on this Tuesday night. We'll do it again, same time, same place on Wednesday.